when we are not happy with with our neighborhood or when we are not satisfied with our social economic states we, we usually move on uh, move to another space uh, move to another to a better uh, uh, neighborhood and uh, the, the picture that you are watching now is very common is that you move you just move to another place and that's uh, my the gist of my presentation is about uh, the metaphor of uh, being mobile of moving uh, of motion on this space uh, from one space to another space and all these metaphors are easy to understand uh, because they are structured by uh, a basic concept which is horizontal movement and um, uh, this movement uh, is uh, usually uh, motivated by uh, an image uh, or schemata which says that you you start with you start at one point uh, you follow a road or a path and you end up in uh, your destination uh, and this is called the source path goal image schemata uh, it has three parts a source of the, the the point of departure the path which is the itinerary and the goal which is the the arrival or the destination and it's usually express it uh, in language through uh, journey metaphors and uh, another visual uh, uh, metaphor uh, i mean metaphor is uh, or another visual uh, visualization of this uh, image schemata is what you are watching now uh, you start in one space which is the source and then you follow your road until you uh, reach your destination uh, of course, we, we need metaphors to uh, talk and understand and reason uh, or explain or justify uh, uh, this movement or, uh, uh, on this space towards one destination, because metaphors are good at um, creating meaning. And of course, we, everybody, or uh, I mean, aims at creating a, a better society, a better understanding of how we move, or how we deal with the, the space. Uh, so far, so nice. Everything is, is quite uh, uh, common and quite, uh, I mean, familiar to everybody. But uh, metaphors are selective. They select one part and, uh, and they ignore or downplay other parts. And even for some, it's uh, the way of not seeing. Uh, why? Uh, simply because when we formulate metaphors and when we propagate them, we usually uh, have one perspective, one, uh, I mean, we see the, the whole process of uh, mobility, for example, from, uh, from one perspective, from uh, an, an external objective observer, uh, but in fact, uh, in, in, in any uh, activity that includes human actors, uh, there are uh, absolutely, I mean, different perspectives, but language sometimes, I mean, uh, pushes us to, to, to be reduced to one uh, perspective. But how, however, in fact, there are uh, multiple perspectives and there's, there's, they sometimes are in conflict. And this is uh, the, the main argument of my presentation is that uh, I'm going to uh, combine or include perspectivity in the analysis of uh, metaphors of mobility uh, before, because in the literature, uh, uh, I mean, mobility moving on the space uh, usually is conflated with, uh, with symbolic boundaries. There are spaces that are, that are not uh, related, that are unrelated, that are, uh, I mean, separated by boundaries, by borders inside, even inside one, one society or one city. There are, uh, I mean, places with, uh, I mean, higher status and places with lower status, good neighborhood, bad neighborhood. And, and they are explained or expressed uh, in, in symbolic uh, uh, boundaries and 
we, we talk about uh, the symbolic demarcation that separates uh, good spaces from bad spaces, low spaces from high spaces. And mobility, I mean, is uh, in this context, is of course you have to, if, if you want to move to another space, you have to cross these boundaries. And this is a main important uh, concept. Uh, uh, Another issue in the literature is that when you cross boundaries, uh, you, you, I mean, activate the your identity, the identity, your your own identity in the first space, and then there is another, of course, a different identity in the destination space, and this is, I mean, a very interesting uh, question, and of course. Um, when you want to move to uh, to uh, to a new space, of course you have to um, to struggle to to get uh, I mean a membership, get access. You uh, you can be included. You sometimes you are excluded, uh, and we will see in a bit how the all these mechanisms uh, work in uh, the corpus. Uh, the background of this presentation is what I studied, uh, I mean, during the 1930s in Tunisia about uh, the when there are a lot of migrants from the countryside to the capital city uh, during uh, a time when there was, uh, I mean, economic uh, hardships. And um, what uh, strikes me is that uh, I mean, the people in the capital city, the officials, I mean, they were, I mean, tired of these uh, migrants because they have, uh, they had no, uh, I mean, houses. Uh, so the, in the official records of the government at that time, there was this uh, specific sentence, which is the capital city must be purged of the undesirable. So here we have a space, and this space is crowded with people who are uh, described as undesirable. And the solution is to purge, is to purify, is to get rid of uh, these people. And in fact, this what happened literally is that these people, I mean, were arrested and deported. So this is the, the background. And the, I collected the data from these sources. Um, and uh, excuse me, I'm going to go through them very quickly. Uh, and here now I'm talking about what I found out is, uh, is that uh, there is a network of perspectives. There are three actors in the process of mobility and the, the space. Uh, the first actor is what I call the nomad, is the person who moves uh, from the periphery uh, to the center following a, a path that's quite uh, clear. Uh, I uh, also found out that in addition to, to this uh, classical picture of a nomad moving from one place to another, but there is another person who already lives in the center and he has, uh, I mean, or he or she or they, I mean, they, they have, uh, I mean, loads of reactions and, his, and their own uh, perspective. The third perspective in this process of uh, movement on the space is the discourse of the, uh, of the state, which describes, which talks in the name of the nation. It's uh, the public discourse. It's uh, the, the official discourse. Uh, so th these three uh, perspectives uh, will have this kind of language. Uh, the, the first perspective is the, the nomad. In the, I mean, the focus is in moving to the next point. I mean, that person is on the move, but the main uh, preoccupation, the main obsession is how to move to the next uh, point. And In, uh, the journey toward uh, the destination, the phrases that I found, uh, and 
I mean, there's here a focus on the path, how to make that path accessible and uh, easy to go to till the end. And of course here, uh, I mean, the hypothesis is also, uh, uh, I mean, confirmed is that mobility is crossing over uh, walls and I found uh, proof of that. Uh, and uh, next, the, the next perspective is the person or the people on the center. They are already in, in the center and the destination where the nomad is aiming at. And uh, these people, I mean, they uh, tend to focus on the source where that nomad came from. Uh, and this is the linguistic ev evidence. And here we, we have this famous uh, sentence in, uh, in Tunisian public discourse about the borderline. And uh, to analyze uh, their discourse uh, is that these place, spaces are uh, of the rich, they are of the beautiful, but they are vulnerable. Uh, that's why they have uh, tight security uh, and uh, this also explains is that they, they need uh, protection. And they protect themselves, of course, through police and cameras and uh, stuff like that. But linguistically, they use their community as a body. So they, they, they emphasize that their community is a pure body. And those uh, nomads are like, I mean, viruses or alien alien aliens uh, get trying to penetrate the body uh, and they have to be stopped. Uh, that's why in, in the discourse of these people in the center, they focus on how to distance themselves uh, from the, the nomads and how to make a, a proximity between each other. Uh, and I call th this space is pure or purify the space. And that's why in these spaces, it's common to find these uh, signs of make, please let these places as pure as you can. Otherwise, you will be uh, punished and you have access uh, to the point, you have boundaries, you are not allowed to uh, cross over them. Uh, this state, the, the, final, uh, the final perspective is about the state, which sees society as one a group. Uh, and uh, I mean, it boasts of, uh, I mean, achieving a purpose is that we manage to move our nation, doing this to, to our nation. And of course here, uh, I mean, the public discourse of presidents or uh, government officials is that we uh, accomplish this, uh, uh, I mean, in comparison to the, to the goals that they set in their uh, political speeches. This state- uh, If yes. you could quickly wrap up, yes. if we wanna have time for questions. Yeah, Thank yeah, you. just uh, two or three slides. Uh, I'm going to, I mean, this, the, the official discourse, uh, I mean, has its agenda. Uh, and, uh, but, uh, uh, I mean, it fails uh, to see the other perspectives because they focus on uh, these uh, empty universals. And uh, uh, I mean, it, it uh, to, uh, I mean, legitimize an ideal frame of the nation. Uh, I mean, but they don't care about the, uh, the interaction between the other actors. Uh, I mean, just here to wrap up, we have uh, three spaces, the precarious space of the nomad, the vulnerable space of the people at the center, and the space of uh, in the public discourse, which is neutral and content free with no conflict. Uh, and um, finally, uh, a question to end with, maybe, uh, maybe in, in, in a later research or in further research, we can explore the global elite and its uh, uh, impact on uh, mobility and uh, the linguistic manifestations so that maybe in the future the urban space would be a better space to live in not just when strangers are likely to meet uh, that's it thank you very much